Hi, and welcome to MRTV. In this video, I'm going to answer your burning question about the G2 tracking. How is it? Is it great? Is it good, but you can't play shooters? Or is it terrible, unusable, and you shouldn't go anywhere near the G2? And for those of you who just got it or who are going to get it in the next few days, I'm going to give you three tips how to get the most out of the G2 tracking. And for those of you who are still wondering, should you get the G2, I'm going to clearly show you the restrictions of the G2 tracking. So absolutely stay tuned, watch the whole video because all of this goodness is coming up. Welcome back again here to MRTV. My name is Sebastian Ang, and this channel here is all about virtual reality. I'm bringing you independent XR reviews. You're getting the latest news and you're getting lots of exclusive stuff. So if you're new to the channel, absolutely subscribe to it and click on the bell button so that you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. All right, so let's talk about the tracking of the HP Reverb G2. And understand that you as a consumer must be really confused because depending on which YouTube channel you watch or which article you read, the experiences differ quite a lot. Like on my channel, you saw me using it, I live streamed it and my experience was good and I told you that the tracking is really good. Now on other channels, it seemed like the tracking is good, but you shouldn't play shooters. And on other channels, it was completely unusable. The controllers were like flying off and it was just a big mess and you don't want to come anywhere close to the G2. So who is right and who is wrong? That is the big question. Now, I don't want to say that anyone is wrong and I don't want to discount anyone's experiences. And I believe those who showed that the tracking was terrible and glitching away. So what is the reason for this? Now, that is the big question. Now there's a big difference between the controller tracking of the G2 and therefore of all the other Windows Mixed Reality headsets and the controller tracking of the Oculus headset, the Rift S, the Quest 1 and the Quest 2. The G2 controller tracking is using visible light to do the tracking. So the cameras of the headsets, they need to see those LED lights. And for the Oculus headsets, that works with infrared light that the cameras can track. Now, unfortunately, this makes it very susceptible to your lighting conditions. If it's too bright in your room, the cameras will have a hard time to distinguish what are those LED lights and what is the lighting in your room and therefore the tracking might not be good and you might not be able to play shooters or the controllers might be glitching around like crazy. So that is a big difference and that is for sure a weakness of these controllers and the IR tracking is definitely better. However, if you care about the lighting conditions, then you will get good tracking and then the controllers will not fly away and glitch around. If they still do, then you do need to check if you probably have a faulty device. All right, so now with this out of the way, let me give you three simple tips that you simply have to follow and then you are going to get a good experience here with the controller tracking of the G2. Tip number one, and that's actually the most important one, your room cannot be too bright. And if you follow this simple tip, then most of your tracking problems will already be gone. So if you have a room and you have a big window, but you don't have a window blind or no curtains, that is a problem. And I understand it's a bit counterintuitive. You would think like if you have lots of natural light in your room, then the camera should pick everything up perfectly. But no, again, this is visible light and the cameras will be confused if it's too bright. Right. What are those LED lights and what is the light coming into your room? So simply put the window blind and put the curtains and things are going to be better. So the lighting that you see here in the back of my studio, that is pretty amazing. That is actually the right kind of light that you want in your room. So simply put the curtain and then you will be better. Also really important and that's also part of tip one. If you are a YouTuber and you want to show off the tracking or you want to show some gameplay, you cannot put those YouTube studio lights that I have here as well, for example. And again, for the same reason, if your controllers are between the studio light and the cameras, the cameras will be a bit confused. What are those LED lights and what are your camera lights? So also then the tracking is not going to be as good as if you simply switch 
off those camera lights. And I understand that is not great for YouTubers and probably YouTubers, they should go for the Valve Index tracking. But well, I also use that kind of tracking here for my gameplays while I play there in the background and I simply turn off those main lights and then the tracking is pretty good. So no big YouTube studio lights and then your tracking is gonna be way better. Tip number two, and that's the same for all the Inside Out Tracked headsets, so also for the Oculus headsets, it cannot be pitch black. When it's pitch black, the cameras inside the headset cannot see the environment anymore and therefore it cannot track itself anymore. So you won't have any tracking, just the controller tracking will still work, but you cannot like look around, move around. So that will be a big problem. You do need some light. And again, this kind of light here is pretty good for any kind of tracking situation. And tip three also applies to all of the Inside Out Tracked headsets. Your environment should not be in a uniform color. So for example, in a green screen room where everything around is green, that's a problem because the cameras do need some points of reference to make the Inside Out Tracking of the headset itself work. So in order to do these kind of things, that would be important. The tracking would still work, for example, but if you cannot move around anymore because the headset itself cannot track itself, that is, of course, a big problem too. These are the three simple tips that you should follow for getting the most out of your G2 tracking. And again, the most important is tip number one, it cannot be too bright. But even with the best lighting, there are some shortcomings with this kind of tracking and I'm going to show you these shortcomings now so that you know what you get into when you get the G2. All right, and here we are in virtual reality with the G2 and we are in Rec Room because they have this nice mirror where you can see the tracking and you will see once the tracking gets lost. So first of all, now here in this environment, well, I followed my own advice with the lighting and that's why tracking is as good as I've shown you before. So I can play shooters, occlusion works fine and also I can play games where I use the bow and arrow and I can simply use the tracking as I'm supposed to use it playing games. And please check out the links down in the description of this video where I do live streams where I show you this tracking and here again, well, this is like also recorded live, right? So as you can tell, the tracking is pretty, pretty good. However, there are problems and there are shortcomings as compared to the Oculus tracking. And the biggest difference is the tracking volume is better with the Oculus headsets because the camera placement is simply smarter and I would hope for the Microsoft engineers to change the camera positioning for the next generation of headsets. So we also have four cameras here, two here in front and two here on the sides. And that's why the tracking volume here is good. It's good enough, right? So you can do these things like throwing things and doing these kind of bow and arrow things. But going up and going down, you will lose tracking like just like you saw here. So let's check this out together and let's check the tracking shortcomings here. So going down here and here now in this position, the tracking will be lost. So let's go up and see when it comes back. Not back yet, not back yet. Here, here it comes back. So again, here it's gone. And here it comes back. And also for the top, here it's gone. And going down. Here, no, here, here now it comes back. So, yep, the tracking volume definitely better with the Oculus Quest 1 and 2 and the Rift S, for example. So, this is a problem for people who have their arms down all the time, right? And who don't move their hands a lot. And yeah, well, then here you can tell the hands are not tracked anymore. And in the worst case, they will even like fly away if you have like bad tracking or even if you have bad lighting, for example. So if you are in your shooter always like this down in this kind of position, right? And then you move, okay, then you do have a problem and that's something that you need to take into account. Now, I was asked, so can you play games like, for example, bowling, where you do have 
the track the controller out of the tracking area or can you play something like sprint vector where you have this kind of motion and for this i can tell you yes you can and the reason is these controllers they have imus built into them motion sensors and the prediction the prediction algorithm that predicts where these controllers are when you're out of the tracking algorithm uh, out of the tracking area is really good. So let me show you that. In motion, even behind my back, it will work, right? So if you are in motion, the tracking is really good. So no problem to do those, this kind of bowling move and also no problem to do this kind of running in sprint vector or in general, everything that you do down here or up there. If you are in motion, you will not have big problems. Only if you are outside, you stay there, now, you see, tracking is gone. And also down here, you stay there. Here, tracking is gone. And you have to go back to get the tracking back. Coming back here into the tracking area is really fast. And if you're not standing in front of a mirror like I stand here, then I don't think you will even notice this kind of problems. Also, another shortcoming as compared to the Oculus headsets is how close you can get to the headset with the controllers. Like with the Oculus headsets, you can even touch them and it, they will still be tracked. With this kind of tracking, you can come close, but if you get too close, like five centimeters, like I'm now, the tracking now is lost and well, the IMUs will do it, right, the tracking, but it's not perfect and that's definitely better with the Oculus headset. So for example, if you play a boxing game like Thrill of the Fight and you want to do this, okay, it will work, right? But it's it's just not as perfect as it is with the Oculus headsets. And well, if you want to play these games, it's good that you are aware of these kind of problems right now. So I hope that you have a better idea now of the G2 tracking and its shortcomings and if these shortcomings are a problem for you or not. Again, check the links down in the description. Also, uh, there's a video where I link to somebody playing Beat Saber on Expert Plus with these controllers because I know that's a big question that you had. Can you play Beat Saber? And yes, you can play it if you are in the right lighting environment. Now, if this tracking is still not good enough for you, but you still want the G2, then you can use the G2 also with the Lighthouse tracking and the Valve Index controllers. And how that works, I'm going to link it to you here. All right, and that's it for this video. I really hope it was helpful for you and that it could shed some light on the tracking of the G2. If yes, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more videos from me, if you want behind the scenes content, if you want to hear about my impressions of your headsets first, earlier than anybody else, then become a member of the MRTV Elite at mrtvelite.com. The MRTV Elite is my Patreon and that is how I support this channel. And well, if you love independent XR content just like this, then become a member. It's only $1. And my big goal is to get 3,000 Patreons. And we are right now at around 420. So I will keep on marching. And if you would become a member, I'd be really happy. So I'm looking forward to meet you there on the other side at the MRTV Elite. That's it. If you have not yet subscribed to the channel, do so now and click on the bell button. And I'm looking forward to see you in the next episode.